What's up everyone? Today we're going to do an interesting problem where we are going to try and determine whether or not a linked list contains a cycle. So if you look at these two examples we have here, in the first case we pretty clearly from the drawing have a cycle and in the second case we don't. And so this is pretty straightforward what we're looking to accomplish. In this first case we're going to return true, there is a cycle, and in the second case we're going to return false. So let's go ahead and dig into what this problem is actually going to involve. So the first thing, as always, we want to do is clarify any confusion we might have about the problem. So one question we might ask is whether this is a singly or a doubly linked list. And in this case, it looks pretty clearly from the drawing like we're going to be doing this with a singly linked list. And that is what we're going to be doing in this case. But if you have the option to do a doubly linked list, then that could potentially make your life a lot easier. Another possibility is you could ask whether or not you can, for example, mark the nodes. Because one way that we could do this would be to mark each node as true as you iterate or mark each node as marked as you iterate through. And then you can see if you loop around back to a node that's already been marked. And so knowing whether or not we can actually mark nodes would be another useful thing. And in this case, we'll say that our node class can only contain the value and a pointer to the next node. So that option is off the table, but it's certainly something that you could ask and could very well be acceptable. Another thing that's a little uh, unclear from the example here is we have this three, four that gets repeated. So in theory, you could imagine there being a case in which you are actually looking for cycles based on the values of the nodes rather than the nodes themselves. In this case, obviously, our nodes, these are two separate nodes that both have the value of three, because otherwise we wouldn't have this link to null. It, we would have a cycle if they were the same node. But in theory, you could consider this to be a cycle depending on how you define it. So in this case, we're not going to define it that way, but it's good to understand exactly what is being asked of you. So now that we've sort of defined it, let's go ahead and talk about how we could solve this problem. I think the most straightforward solution is what I sort of alluded to with marking the nodes, but we could do this by adding, a, creating a hash set or some sort of set of nodes that we've already visited. One of the properties that we can see here is that if we have a cycle, we're clearly going to visit some number of nodes in the list more than once, right? If we continue to iterate, if we iterate through the cycle, because as soon as you get back to the beginning of the cycle, you start iterating over nodes that you have already iterated over before. And so what we can do is just create a hash set and add all the nodes that we see to that hash set and then check for each as we iterate through, check if we've already seen that node before. And if we've seen that node before, then we can just uh, we can say that, oh, well, we found a cycle. And otherwise, we just keep going until we reach the end of the list or until we reach a null node. So that's a pretty straightforward solution. And that's going to take linear time because you only have to iterate over the whole list once plus one. So in this case, you know, you have to iterate through every node once. And then as soon as you come back to this two, you see, oh, well, I've already visited two before. And so I know that there's a cycle. And so you only have to basically go until you come back to the beginning of the cycle, or in this case, go until you reach null. And then you know whether or not you have a cycle. But the downside is that that's also going to take potentially O of n space, because you're going to have to store every node you've visited thus far. So that's an okay solution, and I actually want to implement this first, and then we can talk about how we might improve on this solution. So to implement this, the implementation is fairly straightforward. We're going to create a node class, so private class node, and all it's going to contain is an int value and a node next. Fairly straightforward, common pattern for a linked list. And then all we have to do is create a public method that's going to iterate through each, add it to a hash set and check. So I'm going to call this, it's going to return a Boolean and I'm going to call it has cycle. It's going to take in a node n, which is the front of our list. And then we're just going to initialize a hash set. So hash set node visited equals new hash set. And then I'm going to basically, I'm going to iterate through until 
while current dot or while my current node is not equal to null, I'm going to iterate through. And I'm actually going to do this using a for loop because I think that it's a slightly cleaner way to write it. And I'll explain this after I write it out, but we're going to have node cur equals equals n cur is not equal to null and cur equals cur dot next. So if we think about this in terms of, you would normally do this as a while loop. You'd just say while cur is not, you'd say you'd initialize this cur, node cur equals n beforehand. So you'd put that here and then you would say in your while loop, your condition would be cur is not equal to null. And then inside the while loop, you would have cur equals cur dot next. And with the for loop, you just have your initialization and then your condition and then your next step. So it's the same as if you did like into i equals zero, i is less than some value and then i, i plus plus or i equals i plus one. And I think this is just a slightly better way to do it because it makes, it ensures that you don't accidentally forget to like increment your value. So if you, because if you forget to increment it, then you end up with some infinite loop, right? Because you're not, like you're not updating cur to be cur dot next. So I think that the for loop structure is slightly better because it enforces you doing the proper, uh, having all of the proper steps. Optional, I think it looks slightly better. And then that means that all we have to have in our loop is if visited, so if our set contains the value, so if visited dot contains cur, then we know that we have a loop, so we return true. And otherwise, we're going to say visited dot add cur. So we're just gonna add our current one to visited. And then we're just gonna keep going through. And so if we get to the end of the list, then cur equals null and we break out. And otherwise, we're going to eventually find that visited contains cur. So if we do make it to the end, we're just gonna return false because that means that we found the null value at the end of the list. So that's one solution. Again, this is gonna take O of n time and it's also going to take O of n space. So the real question now is, can we do this in a better amount of space or time? And practically speaking, we're probably not gonna be able to do it in better time because we're gonna to have to go through all the nodes in the list, presumably. Like maybe there's some way that we could figure out that we could uh, like terminate early, but if you consider an example like one in this case where you'd have a linked list and the loop is just the, and then you just have this three that, you know, this is sort of hard to represent, but the three basically points to itself. So let's see if I can draw this. So the three is going to point to itself. like that, then you are going to, in this case, you're going to have to iterate through all the nodes to get to the three before you even reach the cycle. So your worst case is still going to have to iterate through all of them. Now, maybe we can, we can actually do better in terms of space. And this is a little bit of a tricky algorithm to come up with off the top of your head. This is really something that I recommend that you actually learn as one possibility, as a possible algorithm for doing this, because it's not something that really necessarily will make intuitive sense. And unfortunately, there's not really much that we can do about that. So this is an algorithm called Floyd's algorithm. And the way that Floyd's algorithm works and I'm actually going to do an example here with an even, with a cycle of even length and a cycle of odd length, just so that we can demonstrate that it works in both cases. But the way that Floyd's algorithm works is it basically uses a slow counter or a slow uh, pointer and a fast pointer. And it's compare, he, they compare it to like the tortoise and the hare, where you basically have a slow pointer that's going to increment one each turn and a fast pointer that's going to increment two each turn. And then the idea is that the fast pointer is going to go on ahead and then eventually as the fast pointer is going around the loop, they are going to end up at the same point. So they're going to, there is going to be a point at which they are equal. And the idea is basically that, you know, if it's, if there's no cycle, then the fast pointer is just going to reach some null node and that's it and you're done. Otherwise, eventually, 
they're going to be they're going to both point to the same node and then you know that there's a cycle and there is a way to prove this mathematically which i'm not going to do right now i'm going to link to this in the blog post so if you want to learn a bit more about how this algorithm works i will link to there's a great article on quora that you can look and people explain sort of how to reason about this algorithm but for the purposes of this problem i'm just going to tell you that it works and we are going to implement it and i'm also going to tell you that this algorithm works in linear time and again, if you want to get into the mathematics of it, you can do some more research on it, but we're not going to really go into that here. But let's look at what this algorithm looks like. So we're going to start with our slow pointer pointing to the first one and our fast pointer pointing to the second one. And if we don't have two nodes, then we're going to go ahead or if we, if we have either one node or we have two nodes and sorry, if we have one node that points to itself that, or we have two or more nodes, then we're going to do this. Otherwise, if we have one node that points to null, we can just say, okay, there's no loop here. But let's assume that we'll check that base case and otherwise we're going to, so we increment this first one by the slow pointer by one and the fast pointer by two. And then the next turn around, we increment the slow pointer by one and the fast pointer by one, two. So now we're, and each turn we're going to check that they're equal. So now they're equal and we know then that we have a cycle and it's, it's sort of, I think it's intuitive that if they're ever equal, then there has to be a cycle. And really what you, I recommend you trying to prove to yourself is that there will come a point as long, like the hard part is proving that every time there's a cycle, they will at some point be equal to each other because the reverse is obvious, right? If they're equal to each other, then there must be a cycle. But the other way around is a bit more confusing. So that's what you might uh, be interested in looking into a little bit further. So let's look at this other case just to prove that it works for the even cycle as well. We have our slow pointer and we have our fast pointer. And we're going, sorry, it's going to start like this. And then we're going to increment the slow pointer by one and the fast pointer by two. And the slow pointer by one and then fast pointer by one, two. So that be, that goes here. And now we increment the slow pointer by one and the fast pointer by two, and now they're equal. So we know that there's a cycle. So hopefully, at least implementing that algorithm makes sense. It should be fairly straightforward, and let's go ahead and do that. So we can come down here and get rid of all that we have here. And now we're going to say, first, as I said, we need to check our uh, inputs to make sure that our node is not null uh, so that we don't do anything weird. So we're just going to say if n is null, then return false. Right? Because if our initial node is null, then there can't be any cycles. This should hopefully be obvious. Then we're going to say that node slow equals n and node fast equals n dot next. So fast might be null right now, but we know that at least this is not going to throw a null pointer exception. And now we're going to do our while loop. So in this case, I'm actually going to do a while loop rather than a for loop because there's, it's a little bit more complicated. So this makes more sense, I think, but we need to check. So first we need to deal with the case if this is because, okay, so we need to fast needs to be equal to fast dot next dot next, right? Each term turn because we're incrementing by two. So we need to make sure that that's not going to throw an error. And so if fast dot, if fast is null or fast dot next is null, then that would throw a null pointer exception. And that would also indicate that we're at the end of our list or we're near the end of our list, right? It, it indicates that we've found that there is an end to the list. So we're going to just say, while fast is not equal to null and fast dot next is not equal to null, then all we have to do is say, so we're gonna remember we check whether they're equal first. So if fast equals slow, then we're going to return true because we know we found a cycle. And otherwise we're gonna say fast equals fast dot next dot next and slow equals slow dot next. And again, the same as in the other case, if we don't find a cycle, then we 
it means that we reached the end of our list and didn't find a cycle, and so we're going to just return false. So that's all there is to implementing this algorithm. It's actually a pretty simple algorithm to implement. It's just the understanding of the algorithm that's a little bit tricky. So I do recommend learning a bit more about this, but let's go ahead and go through these examples. So let's just go through the first example. We'll say, let's, let's say we have slow here and fast is going to be here. So we're going to say, you know, n is not null, slow equals n, which is going to be this, and fast equals n dot next, which is this. And so we say fast is not null and fast.next is not null. So fast equals fast.next dot next and slow equals slow dot next. Then we're going to say they're still not fast.next and fast dot fast and fast.next are still not null. So we say fast is not equal to slow. So fast equals fast.next dot next and slow equals slow dot next. And now we're going to loop through this one more time. Again, fast is not fast and fast dot next are not null. So now we find that fast equals slow and we're going to return true. And now if we just consider the other case where, you know, this is going to point to null, we have slow and we have fast and we're going to say their fast is not null and fast dot next is not null. So and they're not equal, so fast equals fast dot next dot next, and slow equals slow dot next. And now we see that fast is not equal to null, but fast dot next is equal to null. And so we're going to break out and we're going to turn false. So that's all there is to it. That looks right to me. And in terms of space, this is obviously not using any additional space. And in terms of time, Floyd's algorithm uses linear time. I'm not going to really try and justify that to you because it is fairly mathy, but if you're so inclined, I really do recommend looking into it some more and doing a bit of research. And yeah, so that's all for today. I look forward to seeing you guys again soon.